But we begin tonight with the health risk that wasn't and its extraordinary and unnecessary cost. The government says over $100 million has been wasted, homes lost through evictions and lives needlessly ruined as a result of the moral panic behind flawed methamphetamine testing rules. A new report from the government's top science advisor has found that there's never been a case of someone getting sick from third-hand exposure to methamphetamine anywhere in the world. The new advice to the public is do not get your house tested for meth unless the police specifically advise you it was a meth lab. But as political journalist Benedict Collins reports, the official acknowledgement that New Zealand has been in the grip of a moral panic over meth is far too late for many. It's been dubbed the meth myth. A study by the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor, Sir Peter Gluckman, has found that while consuming meth is dangerous, there's never been a documented case of someone getting sick from third-hand exposure to it. Sir Peter says there's been an inexplicable leap in logic in New Zealand, which saw clean-up standards for meth labs used overseas jump to become a measure for third-hand exposure. There's absolutely no evidence in the medical literature anywhere in the world of anybody being harmed by passive exposure to methamphetamine at any level. We can't find one case in the medical literature. We can't find one case by talking to experts where there's evidence of that harm. It makes no sense. Dr Anne Bardsley did most of the work on the report and said people should only have a meth test done if they're advised their house was a lab. Well, if they have no reason to think that it was, we would recommend them not testing. That has been driven by the industry. Sir Peter agrees. I mean, I can't see the point of testing will stop unless the, the police or the forensics suspect that there's been a, a, a place of synthesis. And Sir Peter says the odds of your home being a meth lab are very remote indeed. Firstly, because the drug is mostly imported, and secondly, because the way meth is normally manufactured now, seldom releases solvents. The Housing Minister, Phil Twyford, says the moral panic around meth has led to needless clean-ups and state house evictions. $100 million in the case of Housing New Zealand. Goodness knows how much in the, in the private sector. So money's been wasted. Hundreds and hundreds of homes have been left vacant in the middle of a housing crisis. And many hundreds of tenants, individuals and families, a significant number of whom will have been evicted on the basis of uh, faulty information. Housing New Zealand was repeatedly warned that it was misusing guidelines intended for the clean-up of meth labs. But it continued evicting hundreds of tenants for meth contamination and would then pursue them through the Tenancy Tribunal, publicly celebrating when enormous clean-up costs were awarded against them. Housing New Zealand's Chief Executive Andrew McKenzie wouldn't answer questions today. But the Drug Foundation's Executive Director, Ross Bell, says the new report comes years too late. The real harm has been the social harm where, where people have been essentially wrongly evicted from social housing, including Housing New Zealand, who have then been taken to the Tenancy Tribunal and have had all those costs awarded against them and, and then being stood down from accessing social housing for, for, for 12 months. So how do you give compensation to those very vulnerable families who have been impacted by this? The Tenancy Tribunal says it has always relied on the most relevant and current guidelines for meth contamination. Phil Twyford has a simple message for those people. It's not fair. Ross Bell hopes today's report is the writing on the wall for some meth testing companies who he says have been fuelling hysteria. This is a huge mess that, that they've created. I, I, I would like to see some of the, the, the worst culprits of this industry to, to, to disappear. The founder of the nationwide meth testing company, Meth Solutions, Miles Stratford, says the report won't be the end of his industry. Obviously the report itself fits very neatly with uh, the stated position of Phil Twyford uh, and the housing ministry has got obviously some economic interests uh, at stake. Uh, and as far as the advice not to test uh, is concerned, I mean, testing is partly about health risk, but it's all also about um, you know, significant financial risk as far as the investment property owner is concerned. And where you get methamphetamine, you get behaviours that can result in significant damage to property. Housing New Zealand will immediately adopt Sir Peter's new recommended testing guidelines that are far higher, and 240 state houses previously deemed to be contaminated will immediately be made available for tenants and the government has ordered an investigation into Standards New Zealand, which developed new meth testing guidelines last year because they are at such odds with Sir Peter's report. From Parliament, for Checkpoint, Benedict Collins. And we'll have more on this later in the programme.